this is useless. Okay, that's not entirely true, but I am scrapping this, uh, not scrapping the entirety of it, but a lot of it and starting from scratch due to a few pretty major design flaws. I mean, to be honest, if I wasn't being super picky, I'd say, yeah, it's fine, it works. But because I am super picky and I'm developing a product that I love and want to use, I'm super picky. So starting again. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is gonna be a, a part of an intermittently updated series on this vlog channel, sharing just the process of designing something that may or may not turn into anything down the line, but I'm developing it and I, I'm finding that one of my passions is product development. I'm really enjoying the process of shaping something to be exactly as I would love it. So I'm sharing this process with you, but also I feel like I need to start all of these videos off with a disclaimer that it may not turn into anything. And if it does, it's gonna take a long time but it's interesting I find it interesting so I'm sharing it with you so this is the last prototype you saw the one that we put together with Ed and it's amazing but the major design flaw you may be cluing into right about now which is that this is a lot of space needed to lay it all out there's something really elegant about the fact that it's all one piece which is really nice the fact that I, I've created a hobby box that I can just open up and get going, but there are a couple of design flaws that really kind of ruin the experience for me, and uh, that's a big red flag that I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to. So the, the first and major one is really the, the length. The First of all, the height of this can't be lowered because of the, the height of the whole box. If it were any lower, then you'd lose draw space, but because it's longer than it needs to be, and for context, the length that it needs to be really only should fit like an A4 piece of paper or cutting sheet or whatever. So there's an extra inch there that's needless, which means all your tools and everything is pushed away from you a further inch. And there we go. Uh, this is an average size table. Uh, and if I'm trying to create a product that suits people's average workspaces and really is a solution to not having a lot of space to set up, this isn't working. As soon as I push this out so there's no overhang here, the handle which is supporting the lid doesn't have anywhere to go. And if I was against a wall or something, I'd be limited to working with this big flappy overhang. So that's one major issue. There are a couple more in the lid that I want to share with you. Now, I liked the idea initially of having this spool holder here so you could have loo roll or you could put filament or, or like armature wire or something. But there are a couple of problems with that. One, it's quite hard to reach it quite far away, so when I found I would use the toilet paper to clean things up or whatever, too far away. And then the other is the, the balance, the weight distribution is way off because I load these up, I pack the drawers full, as, as full as I can make them, which means all the weight is on this side and then when I go lift it up, it's, it just feels heavy in one direction. The other issue is with the lid. So you can see that the support structure of the, the handle goes in and is about that that thick underneath the lid here and that is what is holding the whole thing up now it's actually really secure it's really nice and weight bearing except that under here we've got the uh the support structure there now short of including another panel to cover that up which is going to be more material which is going to be more cost uh, and then also just a lot of wasted space well you know, that itself is a problem. Now, it wouldn't be as much of a problem if it was always put in like upright like this, but because you can flip it and some people might choose to take the drawers out when it's flipped, it just means that unless you remember to take the drawer out before you flip the lid, things are gonna get sort of a little bit skewiffed when it's upside down. And then if you put bring it back up to open it up, things get caught on those bars and that's a problem. So alas, prototype, Version 0.07 is going to go in the pile. Ah, the pile of fallen comrades grows. The good news is, as you noticed, all of the stuff from inside that box is gone because it's in this box. And this is the current working prototype. There are still things I'm trying to solve, and this is not near the finished version yet, but it does solve pretty much all of those issues that I showed you, which is really cool. So let me give you the tour. All right, prototype 0.08. Now, you'll see there are no drawers here. That's because in this current version, it's uh, the opposite way around because the interlocking uh, of the lift is hooked into the back, 
but when you pull the lid backwards, unhooking it from that back plate, that is where you reveal the drawers. So the lid is separated. And the other thing worth pointing out is the handle mechanism is different. So on the previous box design, we just had the handle come up. Uh, and a lot of you had mentioned that that would be uh, difficult to put stuff on it or for storage, which I've taken into account. And also, uh, I think this looks cooler. It's more reminiscent of an actual like chest or something with that shape. And I believe it's, it's better handle support because you've got uh, more grab on both ends and all the way along the bottom. So. That just means that the uh, support mechanism for the handle is now exterior, which has solved that other problem where the support mechanism was under and then there was the catching on the drawers. Now this drawer system uh, is just, this is completely temporary because we're just figuring all that stuff out, but I just had Jeremy uh, measure and cut some for the, uh, the lid of the box just so I can use it at the moment. So uh, a few other problems that we've solved by doing this. Uh, one is obviously the depth thing is now no longer a thing. I can have this flush up against the wall and pretty much any average table size will easily, if this is backed right up to the back there, I've got plenty of room uh, and it means that I can have a pretty narrow table and fit the whole setup quite well. If I wanted, I can keep that flat up and uh, put that against the side and that becomes the setup or I could just put that on my other side or on the ground or wherever I wanted it, it just depends on how you would use it but the point is uh, it gives more flexibility which is great. The other thing is by having the, uh, the drawers reversed and by having the flap open up that way it means that we can control the height of the flap which means this is no longer forced to be too long. Uh, it is now exactly the, the size it needs to be which is uh, I believe perfect at that cutting board size or A4 uh, and I'm keeping that in the shelf there but this new design has got its own little quirks and things that I'm not a huge fan of as well such as the height of this back panel. I, I don't like the height of this back panel because I like to watch TV or interact with my wife while I'm doing my hobby stuff and this feels like a barrier. The problem is it's a barrier that in this design is necessary because it's the support structure and it covers these drawers. So that, that's a problem I'm ticking over at the moment. Uh, all of this stuff is a, a very much work in progress and it's stuff I'm just churning over um, in my spare time and on the side uh, but I'm coming up with solutions and it's really fun to, to problem solve this stuff. The other thing is the position of this uh, this shelf here. Uh, as ideal as it is for just pulling out that cutting board there are a lot of people and myself included uh, who, who like the idea of this being much bigger like at least three centimeters or something so you can keep a wet palette in there like most wet palettes are about uh, the same thickness somewhere between two and a half to three centimeters and if there was a way to keep a wet palette with the whole setup uh, that would be super useful but it would also be useful to have more space in a shelf uh, for for other hobbies so that's a problem i'm currently solving at the moment i've solved it by making this single big drawer so this is my current wet palette active wet palette that I'm using for my hobby stuff and you can see I've got all my paints and hobby stuff filling those drawers at the moment. So I am aggressively using this whole hobby setup and, and loving it, loving when I get to use it. It really is a treat, uh, but it, there are a lot of things to solve and that's what I'm working on at the moment. Oh, and this is my little spot in here, my little stand. So all my work in progress minis, I just stand in there. It's a perfect little thing to take them out, work on them, put them back. <laughs> So that is the, the current situation, the update. I hope you're enjoying these updates. They'll come maybe uh, every month or two as we just trickle along with progress on the side for this thing. But it is a, a very much something I'm passionate about and excited to turn into something hopeful. Like obviously there's no guarantee, but it is something I know I use a lot and, and rely on a lot and have a lot of fun with. Anyways, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see progress of, of this hobby box and also the day-to-day -day of being a YouTuber on this channel, I'm gonna, st I'm gonna start saying subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna start doing it because I'm having more fun with the vlog and it's a substantial channel at this point. It's been an afterthought for so long, but it really is a vibrant community and a place I genuinely feel proud that I get to interact with you all and, and, uh, and have that special place where we can just dive into the nitty gritty and I don't have to worry about 
algorithmic rewards and whatever, um, I could just like share it all with you guys and get your feedback. So let me know your feedback. And also if you're new here, please subscribe because we have a lot of fun. There's a lot of, lot of cool stuff coming. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And that's, um, that's um, I've signed off twice now. Bye.